Hey all, welcome back to another 45 Home Labs video. My name is Zach Perry, and let's talk about some of the exciting releases in OpenZFS 2.3. <laughs> Let's start out with a shout out to IX Systems and Clara, everybody else who contributed to the OpenZFS release. There's a lot of things we're gonna to cover today with the newest addition, like JSON output, long character limits, direct IO, but today we're gonna to be talking about two main things, and that's fast dedupe and adding a single drive to a VDEV. So we're gonna talk first about fast dedupe and what exactly is that? So laying a little bit of groundwork, ZFS deduplication, it's a feature where the system looks for identical blocks of data and stores only the copy. So saving disk space, instead of writing the same data multiple times, ZFS keeps track of references to a single copy. So how does it work? When you write, to, when you write data, ZFS checks its DDT, and I don't mean the one Jake the Snake Roberts was famous for. It stands for the deduplication table to see if an identical block of data is already stored. Uh, if it finds a match, it doesn't write the data again, it just updates a reference to point to the existing block. And if it doesn't find a match, the new block is written and the DDT is updated to track it. But it wasn't implemented much at all, in my experience, deploying enterprise systems because it consumes a lot of memory. Like reading any other data in OpenZFS, it gets cached in the arc which lives on system memory. Another factor was the IO path because every single write and free operation requires a lookup and then a write to the DDT, leading to additional overhead. So the last thing is that there are only certain workloads that's going to benefit. General workload, you're not really gonna see much of a benefit, if any. Uh, when it comes to certain types of backups or VM deployments, you can see some benefit, but even then, very niche cases, and a lot of considerations need to be made, and it's usually not worth the hassle, in my opinion. With FastFeed dedupe, on the other hand, it implements a number of changes to reduce the amount of data stored in the DDT, and when something needs to be stored, it's smarter about how it batches and stages those changes. This is only a tiny sliver of what was done. There's a great rundown by Rob Norris in the description that I encourage anyone interested to read. Uh, side note, uh, reading that article, I found out that there is another support VDEV uh, called the DDU VDEV, but it is very rarely used. Uh, the second thing we're gonna cover here is adding a single disk to a VDEV. Now, this one has a lot of people excited because now you don't need to add a VDEV on the same size when you want to expand it. It becomes a much smaller hit to the wallet. I know I was excited when uh, this was released for my own home lab setup, but there are some considerations to keep in mind. This is speaking from my own experience, of course, coming from working with both enterprise and home lab environments. Depending on how big your disks are, the other factors, uh, logically adding the disk, for instance, will take anywhere from maybe a few hours to a few days or more. Remember, if you have 24 terabyte disks in your system, for example, don't grow your VDEVs too much as it holds more and more data. When the disk fails, that resilver over time is going to take longer and longer and putting more stress on the disks. I don't want to hear about any of you going from a 5 drive RAID Z1 VDEV to a 30 drive RAID Z1 with 24 terabyte disks because now you can add one disk at a time. I don't want to hear it. So with that said, the other thing is planning for future expansion. So when it comes to VDEVs, let's say you have an HL15. You start with five drives in a RAID Z1. Most people will do another VDEV of five disks in a RAID Z1 for an expansion. Then uh, again, when needed for a total of three VDEVs. On the other hand, if you have five disks, add a sixth to that VDEV, it can make the expansion a bit trickier. Let's say you add another VDEV of six drives. Well, now you have three slots left over. That could have been a VDEV for this pool. Now. Saying that, uh, with how flexible ZFS is, this isn't the end of the world. You can add a support VDEV, you can have a use case for a small mirror. Support VDEV, there's a ton of combinations uh, you can do to fit your needs. Now, that begs the question, when is this going to be available with Houston and the HL15, et cetera? So the R&D team is out back working their magic, getting things packaged and set up to release in the future. And with that all said, we really only scratched the surface here of what was in this release. So if you want to see more about ZFS or have us cover anything else, let us know in the comments below.